Okay, so now we have our uh, trim sheet all set up for us, uh, at least the base one. The idea behind this is that you build up more and more of these and you'll get more of these to use as you see fit and spend more time on making these versions better. So like, if I had to do this every time, I would spend all, a ton of time doing it, but the way I'm doing it now, um, I can make another trim sheet and then add some of the stuff from in here and then really spend some time on something else in the new trim sheet. And you'll have these libraries and what I usually do for me is I just put them in um, a decal sheet here and I throw it in one folder and then if I want a second one I'll do this, I'll make a second one and we'll keep going and I'll just stack them all up and I'll save this file as my master uh, trim sheet file. So, all right, so we've got these. Um, you wanna make sure you have some gaps between them because if you don't have gaps between them, then when you bake them, you're gonna have some over, uh, you're probably gonna have some bleeding and stuff across the surfaces. So you wanna try and give them a little bit of gapping in here and then flatten them out as much as you can um, to get that same look. And then what you need to do is, I'm gonna move this down a little bit just to give myself some room to breathe. This is a really fast one, but next time I do one, I could do a nicer one is the point. Um, so what we're gonna do is just export this. We're gonna grab first just the plane, export, and we're gonna name that plane just the hard surface decal plane for now, or whatever you need to name it, trim sheet one uh, plane if you want. You just want the main plane because this is a simple plane that has been unwrapped by default because it's from Mac, and it's just a plane that you've built, so it's just a unwrapped cleanly. And then you wanna grab everything and do the same thing, export again, but this time we're just gonna call it hard surface decals, so we have the two versions like that, and we'll say okay. And it's gonna complain, there's no unwrapping, so of course there's issues, there may be some textures I put on here for something. But now we've got that piece out, and now we're gonna go over to Substance Painter, and in Substance Painter, I've already imported in this version, uh, so it's just a 3D, let me go to F2 here. It's just the plane, right? I've just got the plane. It's got no lighting or anything on it right now. Uh, I need to, I probably have some leftover stuff in here, so I'll just get rid of all my maps just because I was doing some tests earlier, real quick. Okay, and then we're gonna bake it. We're gonna bake, we'll just move this down to a little bit. We're gonna bake this, bake mesh maps, and we're gonna leave it at 2048, and then we're gonna go grab since we're using the decal uh, plane, we want the decal, so we'll say open. And then I set this up to 0.1 because it needs to be able to shoot out a certain amount of distance. You can also come down and change other things in here, but this is really all I change. And if there's a, a problem with um, dilation or something like that, then I suggest you move the pieces around rather than try and get your dilation down. This is 32 pixels. I would think that that's a safe number and that should be enough, especially on the 2048. So um, what I'm gonna do is just bake. Bake selected. And what we'll get, if we do this right, is this. So now I've got this all set up and ready to go. And if I look at it, it, it does the lighting. Okay, so I've got this. Um, next thing you wanna do is you're gonna, basically what I like to do is make a folder in here and call this the base. So what the base folder is, is anything that's unwrapped or specific for this map. Now in this case, there's not gonna be much because we're just gonna get out a few standard metal, metal materials out of here or some kind of metal materials. But um, if you want to change anything, like if I wanted to mask out, say this part here or this part here, and there's ways we could do that, but that's really not the point of this part. Um, I would want to do anything specifically based on the unwrap of this in my base folder. Because what our base folder is, is something that won't change um, no matter what. So if I want to make a mask for each of these, I can put it in my base folder even if not using it. Because if I want to use the next thing on everything I possibly can, I don't want to have any unwrapped involved with it. So what I've done is um, we're going to come in here and I looked, I made a Damascus texture and I'm going to turn this on. And it's a simple Damascus, te Damascus texture. It's not like super, you know, brilliant. It's really big in this case, kind of looks like a zebra. And in case you don't know what a Damascus is, Damascus is a metal forging way that they take two metals, usually two hardenable metals, but it could be a soft metal too. 
and they they combine them and they layer them on top of each other and then they fold them over and they do it over and over again and you get this pattern from it and it's a high-end pattern and it looks really pretty um, and there's different ways you can do it so there's teardrop patterns and and other things too but we just want to do a simple one so I can show you what it's about and uh, I, if you ever want to know more about this stuff I would go watch fortune fire that show is amazing okay so come back to here I have a really simple one I didn't want to spend too much time on it and there are some out there that you can have but I wanted to be give you the idea that I can make my own custom patterns inside of here and basically all I did is I took a, co a lighter color metal and a darker color metal and then I put a mask over it that had some waves some lines so I can change this one to like 10 to get it a little bit thinner and then I probably blurred it out too much a little bit so we'll pull this blur back and we'll get something a little bit so it looks like it's bleeding together maybe we'll come back to this one and do let's do six Let's see if we get something okay so we have that and we have this this material now and if I come back up here and if I grab it in, in here we can see that um, we've got our stuff set up so now I've got this made material and what I would do is make this a smart material because the idea is again just like you have a library of these pieces you want a library of materials that you can just throw on and actually that's what a smart material is it's just somebody else or you have made a material so to show you what I mean if I open one let me find one that's like um, we'll do the steel paint I'll throw the steel paint and put it above it oops with my fingers there you go and what the steel paint is, and it's a rusty steel paint, is if you look at it, it's a folder. And inside the folder, there's the layers that made this steel paint look right. Okay? Um, you can do steel paint or whatever you need to do, but the idea is then you have this to pull from. And, and again, you're not locked in. This is just the base, if you want to think of it that way. This is the base stuff. So if you go to here and then you look at the color, if you want to make it like a different color or whatever, you can do that. You can change whatever you need to. Um, and that's the cool thing about making these smart materials. A lot of people avoid using smart materials because they think it's kind of cheating, but in my opinion, it's a starting point, especially if you've made them yourself. So, and like in here, you'll see I have a bunch of these kind of things, and those are the ones that I use for a client, and, and uh, they have the same starting points. Now, the big thing about these smart materials is they don't have any masking information. You'll see that it's all procedural. If I look at this ma mask, it's just a procedural mask, just a procedural mask based off of the grunge or the mask builder and stuff. So that's the big thing about this. Anything that goes into one of these built smart materials, you wanna keep it um, uh, procedural so it's not dependent on the object. That way you can use it on anything you want. If I start putting unwrapped specific things in there, like if I wanted to highlight or do something inside of these things, then this material would still work, but I'd have to do some finagling just to get it to work like it should. Um, if you want to do that kind of stuff, what you do is you take this material and you um, bring it in here and then you add the mask on top of it. So we can do a black mask and let's say I want to um, use this material. Oops, I did it on the wrong thing. I want to do it all the way up here. I'm going to go black mask inside the whole folder. So now it's gone. And then I'm going to take this and do something. Actually, you know what? Let me do it the other way around because it'll probably be prettier if it's white. So we'll do white. So basically it's still 100% there, but then I can come into my, um, my alpha channel, and if I look at it, it's right here, um, and paint out what I don't want. Uh, I'll just do it really fast here. Uh, I'll go back to this. Shrink my brush down. Probably get something like a hard brush, and if you don't know where those are, they're over here. I'll just do a basic hard. So we can have something simple, and we'll just do like from here and hold shift and click to here and then we'll do here to here actually sometimes it's easier just to do the whole thing and my Damascus is really too big I, I'd want to go back and mess with that so it's a little bit more usable for everybody we can also scale it inside of here but we'll just deal with it this way okay and then I can come back in and push X to go to the negative and then I have this you know, and I can put the mask over and just define certain things inside of here that use this base material. But you don't want this base material to have unwrapping qualities to it because that changes the way that um, 
it's used. You can't use it on everything. You'd have some finagling to. The idea is you drop it on and use it. Um, not drop it on, clean up the unwrap, or specif specify the unwrap for the one you're working on using. So, you know, you can have tons of these. I can throw another smart material on here and do the same thing and, and all that stuff. So that's what you want to do. You want to have a library of smart materials that are some of the basic things you do. And if you know, if you, you can use these, you can download some or whatever um, from Substance Source um, or Substance, yeah, Substance Source, or you can make your own. But, you know, sometimes you're going to find you really want to have an Elmwood and you've got one that you really started making, maybe even in Substance Design, you bring it in, you modify it, get it just right uh, based on what you want it to do, and then you save that as a smart material, and now you have that based um, wood base for yourself. And then if you want to, you know, change it specifically for certain parts, then you just put a mask over the top of the whole layer. Oh, and if you don't, you know, what if you want that same thing but you want it on a different layer, you just copy that layer again. And this one, um, say I still want that rusted paint. Um, I just want it to be not blue anymore. I want it to be this purple or something. And then you come back up here to this mask, which I already made, and I'm gonna remove that mask. I'm gonna clear that mask. And I'm going to, in this case, do a, um, remove it altogether and put a black mask on it so it's not showing through. And then I can come back in and do my, my color stuff. And that mask will show me, it'll make it look like it's the same problem through the whole object. I mean, that's the idea is that you can come in and mess with what you have and spend your time and do it right and now you've got this material that works across several things so if you want painted wood you know, chipped old painted wood you could even have layers in here that you can turn on and off so if you know that it's wood for a piece of furniture just make it with all the different settings and in fact if you make a smart material and you want to uh, modify it you can do that too all you have to do is then take this one right click on it and say create smart material and you see that there's already one in here scrap dirty and if we look at that one we were just looking at still painted worn I think it was scrap dirty this one right so if we have this one and I do this again I right click and I say create smart material it doesn't overwrite the old one it just adds a new one to it right in this case it added the mask but that's fine so then if you wanted to, you could come in here and go find it in Explorer or whatever you need to do. And, or you could just delete the one you made. You know, If they're custom, they give you the delete. If they're built in, they don't. They just show you in Explorer. It'll show you where it is in your whole project. And then that's how you do it. All right, so that's the next step. First, we do the, the geometry. Then we bring it in here and we uh, make our textures and materials, um, export them out. Uh, we'll go over exporting them out. And more, the most important thing we want out of here um, next time, we'll talk about how we use them in something like Max and then how that all transfers over to an engine like Unity. All right, we'll talk to you soon.